everything we've talked about so far has concerned blood sugar and how to keep it from getting too high or too low. What happens if it does? Sugar shock. It can uh, cause blindness. I know high can be dangerous. But if it's high, I don't know. They can go into a diabetic coma or diabetic shock. Lose legs. They, I know they get sick. They have to go to the hospital maybe. So they can get real sick. Disoriented. Die even. They're all correct. All of those things can happen, and much more, if your blood sugar gets too high or too low. The medical term for high blood sugar is hyperglycemia, and for low blood sugar is hypoglycemia. And it affects people in different ways. Sometimes I shake. I mean, I, my hands go really... Well, I sit down, and I calm myself down, and then... I get a glass of orange juice and drink orange juice and then I'm fine. It'll start like just tingling in your fingers and your toes um, and then you lose all feeling in your, your feet especially because your legs are long. It takes the blood a long way to get down there. My, my vision w was uh, kind of like different times it would kind of get blurry and everything and I thought well like I said you know what um, I kind of thought well I'm, I'm just getting older now or whatever but uh, I um, it's a very important that you get to the doctors, it's, uh, eye doctors, it's very important you get to the, uh, to the dentist. Started losing weight without trying and I was kind of excited at first because the weight was coming off and then it kept coming and coming and my daughter said, Mom, you might have diabetes and I said, oh, I don't think so. I get really confused in that. It's really hard <laughs> living with diabetes. I also asked certified diabetes educator Tony Frank to shed some light on the challenges every person with diabetes faces. The high blood sugar levels will destroy the arteries uh, when we're talking about, well, any of them. Um, the large arter larger arteries is what feeds the heart and the brain and so on. Um, there's clogging that starts to happen. The arteries become a little stiff, less elastic. Um, and if it's happening in the coronary arteries, that's what leads to the heart attack. If it happens in the cerebral arteries, that's what leads to the strokes. If it's in the general circulation, and especially the lower extremities, that's what leads to the blockage there, may lead to calf pain, uh, slow healing of injuries, uh, and things of that nature. And that's why it's important, because if there is an injury to the foot, and there's not enough blood flow going down there, it's gonna take longer to heal, and in some instances, it may not, and it'll become infected. And then that leads to larger problems. And the same thing happens with when we're talking about the eyes and the kidneys. Those vessels are smaller, but the same type of damage happens. And if it's the kidneys, then the kidneys don't function properly. They don't filter the, the system. Kidneys filter out our body and get rid of all of the waste. If that doesn't happen, then there's, there's problems. And that can lead to, if there's larger problems, lead to the dialysis, the need for dialysis. Thanks, Tony. Whether it's hyperglycemia or hypoglycemia, there are common sense ways of handling both. Eat sensible meals at the same time every day. Take the right amount of insulin or oral medication. Keep a written log of your blood sugar readings. Exercise in moderation. Don't over or under exercise. And don't drink alcohol on an empty stomach. To learn more, contact the Connemaw Diabetes Institute at 814-534-6800 or call toll-free 866-641-3828. They'll be glad to help.